called the rare earth hypothesis that suggests that there's something special about earth. This rare earth hypothesis claims that an extraordinary once in a galaxy run of good luck led to the evolution of our planet's rich and diverse life. If true, other worlds wouldn't make it past slime. And slime isn't well suited to interstellar travel. Some conditions that are part of the rare earth hypothesis don't sound too rare. We're looking for a star that's been stable for billions of years. We're looking for a rocky planet with water on there. But some are trickier. One in particular takes us back once again to our Earth's violent formation. And a day that was responsible for much of what makes Earth so special. And yet it was just a chance event. It's believed the Earth once had a twin, a Mars-sized planet named Thea, born in a similar orbit. The result? Well, be grateful you weren't there. Thea was destroyed in the collision. But the debris coalesced, forming our planet's traveling companion, the moon. It's true moons aren't rare, but our moon is huge compared to the Earth and this may have been vital for complex life. Because our moon doesn't just give us tides. The moon plays a key role in stabilizing the Earth's axial tilt, which gives rise to the nice pleasant seasons that we enjoy. There's the possibility that the existence of the moon has helped a long four billion year period of clement weather. Without the moon, some believe our planet's tilt would have been unstable. Some years our seasons would be unbearably hot and long. Other years wouldn't have seasons at all. Because evolution relies on small changes from one generation to the next. If that change is useful, the creature is more likely to survive. But if there were extreme swings in climate, so extreme that at times there was no liquid water, an adaptation that's useful one year may be wiped out the next. No long-term stability, no natural selection. And it's not just the moon. There are many other examples of our planet's apparent good fortune. Earth has a system of plate tectonics Plate tectonics is important for stabilizing Earth's temperature. The movements of the vast network of rigid plates that make up our planet's surface create massive volcanic eruptions, recycling carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Today, we think of it as a nasty greenhouse gas. But throughout the Earth's long history, Carbon dioxide has helped regulate our planet's temperature, so complex life can survive. Well, if it does turn out that humanity's role is to act as the midwives to a new robotic superspecies, there's no reason other worlds won't have followed a similar path. If there were another planet on which evolution had tracked what happens on Earth, then there are two options. Either it hasn't yet got to the stage of emergent intelligence, we see no signal from it, or it's got to the stage when the uh, machines have taken over. What is most unlikely is that we would find another planet whose evolution was so synchronized with ours that we would observe it in the just few centuries when the dominant feature is organic intelligence and civilization. 
if Martin's right, in our first encounter with aliens, we might be dealing not with organisms, but with super advanced artificial intelligences. One thing's for sure. If we encounter such beings, they would be unlike anything we've ever seen before. We are thinking about the possibility of entities who may be able to grasp concepts which are as far beyond the human mind as quantum theory is beyond a monkey's mind. So are these entities out there? We've seen how scientists think our universe might be teeming with life. Perhaps somewhere it's evolved. Biology's early emergence on Earth offers hope that life might have formed elsewhere in our solar system. And possibly not too far away, because our next door neighbor had a remarkably similar early life. Mars was made at the same time as the Earth was made, so roughly 4.5 billion years ago, made from the same materials by the same processes. It did have active volcanoes, it had rain, it had water, water flowing over its surface. So for the first billion years of its life, it was like the Earth. And in the first billion years of, of Earth, life got going. But if life did get going on Mars, it would have soon found it tough going. Mars cooled down fast. Its small size meant it couldn't retain its internal heat. And with no magnetic field, much of its atmosphere was lost to space. Could life still be there now? Until recently, most people would have said no. But the more we learn about simple bacterial life of the kind that might have formed on Mars, the more we realize that it's more robust than we ever thought possible. If you think of the range of environments in which people can survive, you know, some of us get really sunburned if we go, you know, out into the garden and the temperature's above about 25 degrees C. But bacteria is everywhere. I mean, you know, absolutely everywhere, deep inside nuclear reactors, deep below the surface of the Earth, in boiling hot water, frozen in Antarctica. It's all over the place. 